Hello, good morning from here. Very happy to meet again. As is said, shared in the chat, it's really, really lovely, very special to see all of you and uh, be connected. Just want to check if you hear fine, if the translation is working. And soon we will have Italian. And um, if you would like to share maybe where you're connecting from, because we always feel um, extraordinary international global family that we are. For some, it's late evening, for some, very early morning. <laughs> so it'd be nice to hear from India. I know we're being joined from Peru and Hyderabad, many from India, but also US, Finland, from China, from sunny London and Spain, probably sunny Spain. Mozambique, UAE, Venezuela, 5 a.m. And I know also, I think New Zealand, probably end of the day. So I like this um, opportunity to churn through quotes, as you know, and uh, this winning the game. The Mark Twain said, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. <laughs> Very simple. Um, Plato, the first and greatest victory is to conquer yourself. Finally, um, Earl Nightingale, he said very simply as well, all you need is the plan, the roadmap and the courage to press on to your destination. So makes sense. Very clear so far. So we'll share any quotes in the chat. And uh, meanwhile, I uh, want to welcome in Brother Prashant, joining from the Green Room. A warm welcome over to you. Thank you. Hello. And uh, things, it appears, meeting after some time, summer, summer break. But we are together. <laughs> so let us create another few moments of silence. And uh, most beautiful thing in this silence for us, it's a rich silence. <clears throat> and it becomes rich because we are using the, the best intellect. The game is as simple as this. Use the best intellect, you win. In this, in this, we are able to see clearly the physical world for what it is. We are able to see beyond the physical world. <clears throat> in darkness, that physical world has become a maze. One is lost within it. In this full light, we are seeing the joke of that. It maze is nice. It's a game. And we are seeing the world beyond. The most important milestone in this journey of victory is the invisible soul becoming conscious.
this moment, the soul becomes conscious. And uh, sign of being conscious, his connection is with the waking reality. His feelings and emotions are based on the waking reality. If he is asleep, then his feelings, emotions are based on the dream reality, dream world. That is, he lives in that dream story. It matters, small, small things matter. We grasp this in you know, the invisible soul who is conscious. Understands his complete independence from the story. Knows that everyone is lucky. All that is required is they need to wake up fully. But they are lucky. What, what he's seeing is seeing from beyond. Thank you. So this is like a nice uh, opportunity for us to to discuss about the victory, but we start with the victory. Discussion is nice and we need to go into the details, but victory is not at the end and the victory game is of one second. And uh, if we start from there, then we will be able to understand also better. We'll come to our, our beautiful sketch, our reference. You will see the whiteboard. And uh, very important for us is to see the bigger map the Paris perspective. And Paris perspective tells us in a vivid way, not a concept, but in a very vivid way, our real world. At one time, we, we said, you know, Baba asked a gathering, what's the difference between a yogi and one who practices yoga? We have said it in the past, but uh, if you want to make a guess, those who have not heard it from us, they get first chance to answer. The question was, what's the difference between a yogi and one who practices yoga? that gives an insight into victory also. You can, you can type your answers. I may need a few moments. It might be more like a sentence. Um, yogi is forever with the true father. So, so, it's You know, both are Raj Yogis, both have knowledge, both are regular students. And Baba is asking, what's the difference between Yogi and one who practices yoga? You want to type your 
What is your best answer? The yogi is in dana. The yogi lives beyond and comes to play his part. The practicing one goes to do yoga. Yoga of the mind and yoga of the body. Well, the one who practices has to put in effort. The yogi, it's natural. Self-acceptance versus complete self-awareness. Interesting. Nice. So Baba's answer was, Yogi is the one who lives there and comes here. For him, that is his world. That is where his family is. That is where he belongs. And he has come here as a guest. Guest maybe for 100 years. So Yogi is the one who lives there, who comes here. And what is yoga? Well, he thinks he lives here. He belongs here. And he goes there. He very strongly feels this is his world. He got an address. His family is here. His house is here. His money is here. No, definitely, I'm here. I'm from here. And he goes there, you know, for five minutes, yoga. So, yoga lagane wale. So, he practices yoga. Then, after five minutes, he's back, you know. Even he is having yoga so that it will help him in his world here. It will help his health. It will help relationships. It will help his job. That's why he's having yoga. Yoga may be a step, but our destination is a yogi. And what is shown here is who can ever be a yogi? The soul that is conscious, he is the yogi. He understands his independence, complete independence from the story. That is the first important thing. Not mixed. Story is separate, he is separate. For anything of this kind, the very first thing we need is parous intellect. It is like a game of the intellect all along. Why parous? Because parous helps us to see what is subtle. Parous helps us to see what is broad and unlimited. Helps us see the big, big journey and so it is not a question of just knowledge. You can give knowledge of the home and knowledge of the soul to 100 people. And they may not mean anything to them. Because if they approach it with the narrow intellect, it doesn't mean much. It's as if like a griddle, it disappears. They can't handle it. But if you have the broad intellect, big. you can see the big map, then everything falls in place. And you are understanding your world, a logic world beyond. And uh, in that world, you are very, very lucky, a logic world. You know, you, it is a life with God. He doesn't need to be told, remember God, remember God. He doesn't need to be told, be soul conscious. That is natural. He knows all our family of souls. And that's the only thing he knows. That is the only reality for him. The, his world is a world of immortality. But another beautiful aspect, he knows the physical world for what it is. It cannot harm him. The story cannot harm anyone. 
it is harmless. And when it is harmless, it becomes a game. Anything that is harmless, it becomes a game. Even a toy gun, you know, you are given a, someone pointing a toy gun at you. It is not harm, it's not going to harm you. Then it becomes a toy. It becomes a game. So also this whole physical world, ordinarily people think that it can harm them. They are, they are building castles. Whereas for the invisible soul, this entire physical world is a game. But beyond that world, once anyone realizes that nothing can harm them and uh, they are immortal and they need nothing from anywhere for their existence, their life becomes one of a joy. Natural. This applies to humans, animals, anyone. Our different mechanisms start only when I feel there is some kind of a harm can come. Our defense starts. Different circuit takes over. Defense circuit. This invisible soul is the invisible prince. He, he knows he is forever safe. He knows everyone is safe. This world is safe. Beyond harm. Story cannot harm him. All that has happened, he is seeing it with the Paris intellect. He is seeing the big map. And that's why his life is of joy and love. Always. It is, he's not waiting for Christmas. Life is of joy. It is a region of joy and love. In the story, many things come, go, change. Story ends. But he is awake to a different reality. And this game is of a second, you know, as we are experiencing. We just have to find a way how it can be more and more frequent. You know, the reason we lose this is because we, in our past, we have created ego. That is, that is what our life has been, all these many lives not just create ego, to make ego bigger and bigger. That, that is the, our um, notion of success. And so that is what we have to deal with. Ego wants to go back in that old perspective. So just an overview, you know, what we have seen is an overview. Anyone want to add anything, say anything? Feel free to share in the, in the chat. Well, overview is good because um, this tendency to adapt to um, the spiritual cause, even we get each one of our false deceptions each ego has his own game he's playing and can take commission from what is giving attention to the role in the drama and it can be confusing unless we are really grasping this circuit uh, which is a angelic uh, feeling of being beyond harm we need to keep that contrast very so clear um, and can really relate to the hot griddle, like when you're you're new. It's there's nothing that holds this, but in time, I think that um, the exposure helps. But yeah, just knowledge. We need um, we need to create that atmosphere to hold the experience. A mm -hmm. uh, question here from chat. So is the soul different or separate from ego? It's a question. 
is the soul separate from ego? Different, yeah. There's a question. Ego is like a function. In the soul is the one who is the main, main, main player. He is the traveler. Soul is the main thing in this whole universe. In a, right now, it is a soul who is experiencing this gathering, this knowledge, making sense of it. But soul can also go into confusion. Soul can also go into ignorance. Soul can go into darkness. Soul can come into light, clarity and confusion. This is, and soul creates false identities. And that is what we call ego in an ordinary sense. But soul has also the option to create soul awareness. We call it self-respect. And he can, these are different functions happening. Like one function is emotion. Another function is thought. These are all happening in the soul. Different cognitive functions. So one function is what he thinks he is. And he can be thinking of himself in complete confusion. He thinks he is the body. Or he thinks he is the manager or someone. I'm the father of someone. He, he can, it is the soul who is defining himself with all of this. This is what we call false ego or just ego. So these are functions. But soul, we want the soul to come back to senses as if, you know, come back to consciousness and realize that he is the invisible prince and he is from his supreme home. If he wakes up to this, then that is like a coming in the self-respect. This moment, in it, right now, we, we all need to ask, what do you feel you are? And if you feel this moment, you are male or female, you know, this body, that is a identification and a false ego. This moment, you, me, we are like tiny points, travelers. We are not from this physical world. And we got our world beyond. If we come in that awareness, then it is soul consciousness. It is nice to see that function of, of ego and, uh, and soul awareness within ourselves. That is fun. Seeing well, the contrast. You see the fun or what's fun about it? <laughs> because you see the difference? It becomes like a um, and it is soul awareness itself is like discovering a big, big treasure. And you are seeing that function. You are seeing how we can identify with so many things, you know, and you are, you are seeing it as a game, you know, and a game and then you can check and change. And you know, that is like you are able to spot what you are identifying with. You know, and you are seeing how bizarre it is. You know, so we all are identifying, but if you are able to see the contrast, that is that is the method for our victory. Otherwise, whole world they are in the false space, and they think that is normal. For them, it is not fun, really. You know, it, for they, they, it is a boring life. Whereas for you, you are seeing there is a, some beautiful option for you. You can step out of this. So life itself becomes like a game. Yeah, thank you for 
Yeah. Uh, Obs observing, you know, self observation is a important part of this game. Yeah, the game. I, the follow up question was asking about difference between Maya and uh, Ravan. So we put the link to the story of Raman Sita in the chat. Um, another question. Despite knowledge, we get entangled in the game and lose the reality of being lucky. It's not that we've forgotten what we are, but it becomes difficult when we are entangled. How to make it easy? Another question, how to get out of confusion? So that's a similar question. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I will tell you a small story. And... Uh, that will help us understand how we are entangled. This is a real, real story. One boy, a four-year-old boy, his name is Spin. His name may be someone some more than Spin. Spinoza, so it could be something like that. But he's called that I know him as Spin. And his mother tells the story. And what she says, she takes this boy to his friend one day in a week. They, they go to a friend. He plays with his friend for an hour. And then they go home. And then he cries for the rest of the day. And the mother says, this happens every week. There they go there. He plays for one hour and then he cries for eight hours. And a mother is not affected by this. Mother also goes there. Mother also has some uh, her friends there. You know, she creates time, and she goes home, and she is enjoying you know being there. She's happy being at home, but the boy is crying for the rest of the day. You want to tell me what is happening? Why is the boy crying? What's the difference? Why mother is not affected, boy is affected? Maybe you might be coming across similar situations. He's crying because he's missing his friend. That's why he's crying. Why? Why he is affected and not the mother? What's the difference? Well, he is a child. Um, ignorance, loss of security. The child, she she doesn't know, or he, the boy doesn't know. Doesn't have an idea of the the bigger picture. Sure. No, the. The situation is that children cannot see that much into the future. That is the situation. You know, and up to a certain age, they cannot see even tomorrow. This doesn't exist for them. Children up to the age of 11 months, they can't see in three dimensions. Like say they want your pen and you put the pen in the pocket. It is right in front of them, but it is in the pocket. They can't see the pen. So they feel the pen is gone. They, they, it doesn't occur to them that they can put their hand in the pocket and the pen is there. Their world is two dimensional up to the age of 11 months. After that, uh, we can see things differently. And but time dimension develops gradually. So for them, you know, they are going to this friend's house and then they can't see the end of when they are going to leave. He cannot see that. He cannot see the exit. You know, so here, what we are seeing here on this sketch here, there is an exit.
this exit they cannot see i'm going to leave this house and if anyone children or adults if we cannot see the exit then subconsciously it means i am there forever so there is a blind spot you know any time if you are driving there is a blind spot you can't see it that will be accident you will be deceived there will be problems so this pain he cannot see the exit so the, he deep inside he feels he is going to be here forever so now there are no defenses they are lowered defenses are lowered he is believing that he will be there with his friend forever subconsciously he is settled to that and suddenly bang he has to go he is out of this whole situation and he feels it is very unfair suddenly you know he was according to him he was promised this you know life and suddenly why there is this sudden change sudden disruption you know and he he not just saying oh i'm missing he cries a real sorrow because because it is you know disrupting for him not because of the situation but because he was deceived and when he was deceived he has gone in this direction of the spiral got into creating bondages and more bondages within short time he sort of went into that thinking and then then sorrow mother mother can see the we end of one hour mother i have already got other appointments after that and she knows she is going to visit him again in a week's time mother can see the time dimension better and so mother did was not deceived even though she likes those people there and all she was not deceived she did not cross that line she did not cross that green line she did not go in that ignorance and as a result that is the line of ignorance and when she has not crossed the line she knows she is just a temporary uh, time then what really happens is she enjoys the place as a guest she enjoys everything there she enjoys going there she enjoys living the house she enjoys her home she enjoys the town whereas spin is crying in the rest of the day his home is in front of him his toys are in front of him but he is crying the rest of the day now let us come to our scenario our situation what has happened to human beings we have got a guaranteed exit we cannot deny our exit billions of uh, people come here they live they leave everything behind we have everyone has gone we don't know anyone who has come and stayed here <laughs> you know in the history books don't tell us that anyone has come and stayed they all have gone in this in this planet so exit is guaranteed but our intellect doesn't see the exit this applies universal just like spin cannot see the exit our intellect the exit is not real what is the proof this is a big statement they may be talking about that and they may be working in crematorium also and there are priests who are giving sermons about all this death but that for their own death it is not real for them what is the proof is a big statement no one no, the exit is not real for the whole majority i'm talking a whole you know the universal why and what is your argument can you it's very interesting well um others are typing 
It reminds me of my own grandfather who said there's no pocket in shroud. Shroud is what you wear, the, the, the corpse, but yet yeah, still collecting things. So um, one comment is fear of death. That's why it's not a reality. Uh, maybe we remember as souls we are, and there's something written in Hindi, I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> immortal. Okay. Well, if we remembered we were immortal, then everything would be okay, wouldn't it? Yeah, the uh, argument, a strong argument. I, I can make this statement. Everyone is this. Uh, everyone has got a blind spot. We can't see our own exit because everyone is deceived. Everyone is busy creating bondages here. You know, everyone is believing that they can own things here. You know, people, position, possessions, they, they think it is mine, mine. They use the word mine. It's a common word. So if someone is not using the word mine, then uh, we can say possibility is there. Uh, he is not deceived. So this, this is useful for us to see, you know, that we can't understand now where the problem is. We, our intellect doesn't go far enough. We can see that we are, I am a guest for one hour to someone's house. Yes, I can see that one hour. I may be on holidays and I am there for two weeks. That we can see, two weeks. But this journey in this physical world, we somehow can't see the end and we don't think of it. Uh, many cultures don't want to talk about it. So it is like the you know, no go area there. Don't think of it, don't examine it, don't look into it. And then subconsciously we believe that this, this is our eternal existence. This is going to be there forever. We may not say it in our intellectual way, but subconscious. Where is the proof? We we believe and we are busy collecting things, claiming things. And then that is as if we think it is a success also. Is it possible, say if you are in some place just for half an hour and you've got to exit, is it possible you spend that half an hour collecting things? And, uh, and then we, when you know absolutely that you have to leave, you got nothing else there as if collecting, collecting, and then leaving. Will you do this? Nothing, you, you will feel that is a useless activity to collect and then go. And this, whether it is one hour or 100 years, it is the same, same thing. Our positioning is, is distorted. We are deceived. Now, and then once you are deceived, then that is a complete you know, you know, cause of all our riddles, all our complications in life is this. Then deceived into a defeat. And defeated by whom? We use the language Ravan. Ravan takes birth. The R factor. R factor takes birth. R, Ravan has got 10 heads. So these are different, different identities we have created based on this temporary story. And what is unique about this this R factor, Ravan, R Ravan factor, what is unique? Ravan is absolutely the embodiment of ignorance. He's very comfortable in that ignorance. He's completely deceived, but he says, don't question that deception also. Just like you don't question the exit, he says, don't even question the deception. Let us have a party within this. 
and uh, Ravan likes that darkness and uh, deception because then he survives. If you bring light there, if you bring clarity, then Ravan doesn't exist. So Ravan, when we say Ravan is the embodiment of ignorance, embodiment of, of bondage, embodiment of deception is deceived heavily. It is a bit like someone is deceived and he, he doesn't even know that he is deceived. So it just leads to a bigger shock. You know, someone who is deceived and understood he is deceived, he can at least take some caution you know, and see how he can come out of it. Someone who is deceived and doesn't even know he is deceived. Ravan is that. He doesn't want to know that he is deceived. Plato calls it, you know, Plato philosopher, he calls it, don't know that I don't know. So Ravan's life is this. Don't know that I don't know. And very stable, but stable in that full ignorance. That's why when knowledge comes in, Ravan, he says, no, life is okay. Life is very good. Party is going very well. But right now, something is coming. You know, so don't think about tomorrow. So that is Ravan's double ignorance. But by definition, anyone who is deceived, you know, it just leads to more complications you know so Ravan is the one who ends up you know being sad bad and mad that is the life of Ravan it starts with party Christmas but uh, journey is the journey of Ravan is sad, bad, mad. From the first day, it is not that Ravan in time it is sad. From the first day, because subconsciously he is into panic. He knows everything of his world is going to disappear. He knows of subconsciously he knows of this. Things are going to end. So subconscious panic is, is the life, but suddenly things come to in front of him and he is not prepared. Just like spin, you know, he lives in this bubble that as if he is going to be there forever with his friend and then suddenly he is out of that situation. He did not even think of it. He says, why is I am taken away? <clears throat> Now solution, if we are to think of the solution, we have to see if I can stretch my intellect. Otherwise we can't solve. This um, big victory we are talking about is not possible with the stone intellect, with a narrow intellect, the narrow vision. It is not possible. Just like children, you can't even see so a little bit. Uh, they can't plan something, what is to happen in a month's time. They can't even see what is happening in one hour's time. You know, in mean, month's time and a year's time, they can't think of it. It is not real to them. So also here, absolute precondition for us to stretch our intellect. You want to understand knowledge properly. When we are using the language of Paras, Paras is like a highest option everyone has got. The biggest gift anyone can ever have. Paras includes the unlimited 
intellect. Paras includes the subtle intellect. God is called Parasnath. So you are seeing the, able to see the way God sees. And we all have it. And more we use it, it will become stronger. It is like a, a absolute principle. Any muscle you use, that will muscle will become stronger. You don't use, you lose. Some muscles you don't use, those muscles will add this atrophy. They will remain weak. So Paris, you know, one reason we are drawing this sketch and a bigger sketch, it is the Paris perspective. And important, here we show the perspective of the yogi. He's coming from that sky in this box. That is, that is why it is Paris perspective. He is not having yoga sitting there in that box thinking of the home, but coming from the home into that box. He's a yogi. But you are looking at this for 10 seconds. You are giving nourishment to the, your intellect, Paras intellect. And I encourage more to draw sketches like this and keep it in a more main room. So each time you look at it, they give micro experiences. And they are precious. These little, little experiences, they are precious. One minute, half a minute, any of these things are precious for us. But I might encourage you, and it is a nice homework for all of us, to think of what will help to stretch the intellect. What are the other games you can think of that helps to helps to nourish this broad perspective? Baba uses the word far-reaching intellect, broad intellect, unlimited intellect. Baba emphasizes this. It's a game of the intellect. We all have, but we have to build muscles. As an example, this mother of spin, what can could she could have done? You know, she says, should I go at all? Should I stop visiting this friend? Or should I do something else? What would you tell her? What can she do? And she says, maybe I should not visit this friend. He just, uh, he cries for the next eight hours. I better stop visiting. What is your uh, reply to her? It's a good question. Um, for a moment. Um, maybe warn beforehand. Yeah. Explain to the child that we're coming back to visit again next week. So you sort of put his yoga of his intellect to the next visit. Maybe help the child understand, could be through story, explain to him where his home is. <laughs> reinforce that's good very good yeah th these are all things you know if the child is told you know by the mother we are going to this place and after short time we are going to leave that place and let him hear the word that's the exit and we are going to go to another place we are going to go to some garden and let him stretch his intellect let, let him grapple with this, that there is a journey. There's more than just this experience. If it is 
tell him in the morning, tell him just before visiting here, tell him when he arrives there also. And the reminders are necessary, you know, for and everyone. Tell him when he arrives. We are arrived. At that time, it is good. Uh, later to tell him it is too late because he has, is already deceived and he has gone down the spiral. He has crossed the line. So if you tell him beforehand, then the, he will not be deceived. And uh, then there will be no reason for sorrow. He will enjoy. If he's not deceived, he will enjoy being there just like the mother and enjoy living the place, enjoy his home, enjoy his life. If he's deceived, he's not enjoying his life. Deception, deception leads to many complications. No one likes to be deceived. Even animal, human, no one likes to be deceived. Here, it is a deception. Same thing applies to us. We have to remind ourselves of this big map, ourselves. You know, this is the important thing we can do. Uh, grapple with eternity, what eternity means. Just eternity as a, as a concept. The home that exists is eternal. It just helps you stretch. The drama things go, but there is this expanse exists forever, even for one minute to grapple with it. In a spin the cycle, Baba tells us, go through this. You know, there is a journey, birth, that, birth, that. And this is just a short part. Now it is much bigger cycle, cycle of time. You know, it's, um, this is like a part of our yoga. And one, one of its big benefit is it, it stretches the intellect. And then you are seeing this journey is part of much bigger. If we think this, uh, otherwise most people are in pettiness. Leaders and uh, they all like spin. You know, because the little thing have become so big, they are ready to fight and they declare wars. But when you see the bigger map, you are, see your whole attitude is different. Game is different. Most important, you are not deceived. If you are not deceived, you will not go in that direction. You will not go in the downward spiral. If you are not deceived, you will not cross that line dotted green line. That means a lot. If you're not cross line, then Ravan is stopped early on. <clears throat> we have crossed the line. We have already made Ravan there. But to win this game the, from Ravan, we have to make Paris strong, see the perspective. One, uh, one practice we hear in the Murlis, in the language of death, death comes very often, die a living death, think of what, what it means. You know, the, it is a very nice exercise for everyone. If you are to die today, what will be the scene? You know, are you prepared for for death? If destruction was to come, you know, are you prepared for it? Just a thought experiment. And that whatever is is the scene of the drama that will continue, because I had a thought experiment. It doesn't mean destruction will come tomorrow. But all that happens, you are not deceived more you are thinking of this you know, exit, you, you end up having the broader intellect, broader perspective. And in the broader perspective, you are a winner.
anything uh, anything you want to add you know maybe sarah want to add anything after that we'll create some time for practice there are um, some questions but um, yeah one one that has come up if we start believing that we are beyond harm do our reflexes do they not stop functioning sure you know and, uh, mm. any 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 player you know uh, whatever he's playing you know say he's playing football or cricket is a good example he goes there because he enjoys that's why he's on the field you know he doesn't think you know the others want to harm him that game is going to harm him but their reflexes are to their maximum they are able to catch catch the ball you know in a split second it is going at a speed you know past them unexpectedly it goes and they can catch the ball so reflexes are very very there very much there they also know to protect themselves so ball may be coming in that direction they know to protect themselves but all along then they enjoy the game and they go there because game is fun uh, the reflexes is a different mechanism this um, feeling uh, of a victim and paranoia that is another another department it's just like if you are watching a story you know story you know, in which there is a dragon and there is a king kong and it, it's a story story cannot harm you and i don't need to go there with the attitude of, of a panic the attitude of you know you know defense you know you don't have to go there with the machine gun because it is it is harmless film you are watching for the invisible player in this physical world is no different he deeply knows it cannot harm him but he's he's a player and he has instincts of the player his reflexes of the player now feel free if you want to add anything more um yes would you describe a bit more about the concept of eternity this question from the chinese group yeah the, which is such a nice nice area to explore just no beginning no end it is nice to give our brain you know, like a little exercise to grapple with it like most of our you know uh, ideas whatever we see we see beginning and end everything has beginning and end and then patthar stone intellect operates with that beginning and end just to give the exercise for one minute what is eternity no beginning no end something that exists forever and for that we definitely need to come to that supreme sky in it and this this minute let us experience this you know create this one minute of this supreme sky we are seeing that expands and this supreme hope we see it in gentle red color and in this sky we see this living star true self in the form of a star
and we are aware this whole dimension is timeless, it exists forever. And we do not need to know anything else. It is nice to touch base to this reality that you exist forever. Everyone exists forever. <laughs> that is, <laughs> bottom line is this. Many, many things will happen in between. There may be wars and deaths and uh, not just one death, many deaths and, you know, Many things, births and uh, bad guys and good guys and uh, all this going on. But you exist forever and you are never harmed. I don't need to know anything. Ever. Just nice to touch base <laughs> to this reality that exists. Otherwise, in that downward spiral, we are lost into the maze and have forgotten our, our starting position. But as we mentioned at the beginning, more we play with it, the intellect will continue to get stretched and uh, many things will become more vivid and real and obvious. Just like for a child, you know, to, to a four-year-old child, yeah, what many things are not obvious, the intellect cannot handle it, but uh, after another 20 years, he, he teaches others. You know, he teaches in the university things. Same here, you know, as we play with it, play with it, many of these areas will become obvious. Any other thoughts? Yes, lots of thoughts. Um, okay, there's one question. There is a sense of guilt when one loses time living in ignorance. We educate ourselves to come out, but how do we come out of the guilt? So, <clears throat> one, one thing to remember, you know, they're worth writing it down also. Our spiritual journey is not a journey of guilt. It's a journey of greetings and congratulations and celebration. It's a journey of fun and happiness. So every minute you are using that minute in a right way, congratulate yourself. Acknowledge it that you did one minute that is right. Another minute you do it right, congratulate yourself for that. Anything you are doing right, acknowledge it and congratulate yourself. Let there be that energy inside of, of positive, you know, the greetings and celebration and uh, enthusiasm. These are the powerful motivators for us. Guilt is not our motivator. We, of course, don't want to create problem to ourselves. We know this. We know Ravan is the one who wants to go in our other direction. But 
we don't want to spend our day in guilt. Either those feelings may come, but also add in the equation uh, the moments of greetings and congratulations and of appreciation and celebration. Beautiful. It's nothing holy about guilt. That's on bhakti, isn't it? Yes. Is the game of being silent and stable when at the workplace with confused and autocratic leaders accurate or should one assert your view to those leaders in the game? Now, sure. <clears throat> the first thing is and uh, you understand it is a game and uh, be free from that game. In other words, you are not approaching the situation from your own ego. First thing is that you step back from, from that ego perspective. Let the invisible player become conscious. An invisible player, he, at the beginning we said, if you are awake, then you are connected to the waking reality. And if you are connected to the waking reality, you know you are lucky, very lucky. You are not saying you are lucky because of that little, little club, that uh, physical world. We call it club. You are lucky not because of that physical world, temporary world. And Ravan might think he's lucky because of that. But you are understanding you are very lucky, eternally lucky. And that is vivid and important for you. So having got that right, and you know that this is a story and this is a game, Okay, and now you feel you have to intervene and say anything, uh, draw attention, let it come from that higher consciousness than my own lower consciousness. If I'm in my lower consciousness, then I'm a loser anyway. In a, uh, either case, I'm a loser. If you are in the higher consciousness, you are a winner. It's the game. You are not looking for some results. You know, it has got a script and it has got a drama, but you perform the highest action from that highest space. That itself is a success for you. Hope that helps. Thank you for the answer and the question. An interesting question here. Isn't the story interesting because of Ravan? Because without Ravan, there'd be no script. Sita gets into Ravan's trap and then the thrill and excitement starts here. If Sita forever stays with Ram, that would not make a story. Sure. The story that we speak about in Sita and all, it is a psychodrama. That is a different thing. You know, uh, that is a different story. But when we are saying this story, this, uh, our, you know, what happened yesterday and what happened today, this is a golden age also, there is a story. There is no Ravan there in the golden age, but uh, there are Episodes every day, it is what is happening. It's a 5,000 year long story. The story is independent of, of Ravan and Maya. That, that is a psychodrama. The story is a separate thing. You know, and we get deceived in it and we come out of it. That is separate thing. Yeah, I think there could be misunderstanding that coming 
into Ravin's kingdom is somehow coming into the drama, but it is not meant like that. I hope that helps. There's also a clarifying question um, from the Chinese group. I feel everything is happening inside of our brain. The external is just imagination. Could you clarify this is their understanding? And within that is the soul world, our imagination? If it's not, how do we know? Sure. You know, this knowledge and you know, our model is not idealist. You know, there are some who think the world doesn't exist outside. It is all what we are experiencing. That is all. Everything is, is just the consciousness exists. Nothing else exists. That is the, they don't even say brain, but just the consciousness exists. That is idealist model. But our model is the dualist model. And what is the dualist model? The soul exists. <laughs> it, is a, it is meant as a soul. And uh, the physical world exists. Soul is experiencer. That's all. Soul, what is the main function of the soul? Is a consciousness. Is the experiencer. And then, and then there is the physical world, and the physical world is uh, without the experiencer. No one is experiencing. It is there, but no one is experiencing. When we come in the physical world, then the experience starts. So the model here is it is dualistic model. And uh, this dualistic model explains more things. And then the third one is materialistic model, which means just the matter exists, consciousness doesn't exist at all. That is the model that scientists, you know, at least large majority of scientists, they might be promoting that materialistic model. But uh, dualistic model, explains more things and uh, the whole scene becomes clear. And um, thank you for that. Um, there was a request, if you could just revise perhaps the third model. Okay, I'll, I'll quickly go through these two, three things. You know, one is called idealistic. So in this, just the consciousness exists, nothing else. It is all the experience of the consciousness. Uh, he can think of this universe, but it is the consciousness. Dualistic consciousness exists and uh, matter also exists. And it is the interplay of these two things. And third is the materialistic model that says just the matter exists and the matter evolves and creates human beings. And it is still matter, you know, that a matter is experiencing matter. Nothing else exists. And so for this um, knowledge that we are studying and what Baba teaches us, Baba's position is here is a dualistic world. We have our world, soul world, we come into the physical world. Then the experience starts and there is a time we step away from the physical world. Then we come back. Uh, consciousness is separate from matter. And as we said before, you know, this explains more things. Any model that has got more explanations are, are more likely to be solid, true. Um. 
that helps. Um, idealistic, which is asking in the chat. Um, I think because she's coming from maybe that space, just consciousness exists. So there's um, everything is imagination in that model. Yeah, I think maybe uh, if you have anything to add, if not, that's fine. So um, we also have rooms now, and that might be a chance to reflect and ask or share any questions or reflections. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, nice. And one question could be, um, what helps to stretch, stretch the intellect? You were saying to think of games, but do yes, you have any? Yeah. What are the different things that, that have helped you? And... Uh, that you want to experiment with, you know, build the muscles. You know, if the intellect is strong, then you many other things will become easy. Yeah, we're just putting that in the chat. Um, Build the muscles. Implied in that is um, Paris. Yes. Paris intellect. Do I, we don't really want to make butter intellect limited one stronger. So we just put that, and um, we can also announce it when once you're in. And rooms have been created, but if you're in the wrong room for your language, do please press the button which says help. And uh, we'll meet you back just over 10 minutes. Enjoy. Thank you. Back in the main room, welcome. I know when everyone is enjoying rooms because you all come back at last second. <laughs> I hope that you uh, feel you can continue any conversations in the chat, anything that we want to add. Meanwhile, let's create a minute of uh, silence together. Thank you. I'm um, happy to also be welcoming a guest who had agreed last minute to share thoughts. Welcome Sanjay from in the drama located in Israel, but we're not from here, so don't want to reinforce that, but it's always nice to have the coordinates. Welcome to Sanjay, lovely to hear from you. Om Shanti, and nice to be here with you. Sound is okay? 
Okay, thank you. Yes, and the discussion was wonderful. Many, many ideas of how to strengthen the muscle, the intellect. From Amrit Vela during the morning, during the day when meeting people, how does the badge is doing a work of uh, revealing, giving the chance to reveal uh, God while uh, sharing points. Wonderful discussion. This one, um, it is seem to be that so many things are happening in Israel. And then if you get into those details, you easily can be drawn to uh, because a huge, a huge um, revolution is happening in Israel right now, as we speak. So very easy to get into uh, those stories and scenes and to become confused and maybe afraid even and uh, to look forward with um, worry and fear what the future will bring. And what always helps here is going back to these basics that Baba mentioned every now and then. What is there? And it was talked a lot about, uh, a lot about, uh, Prashant mentioned, this is actually a story, nothing but a little 5,000 years, like five seconds that pass exactly as they pass every time. And why to stuck into those scenes here and there just to play this game of a eternal soul who comes here to have fun. Anyway, everything is recorded. Every script is there beforehand. And why worry or trying to change things or um, scripts of others? Uh, and the one thing that helps here to play the recorded part in this intellect as beautiful as possible, whatever it is, just to be the best actor possible Whatever part is there, maybe it's a little, maybe it's a big. In the story, if you look at parts, yes, you see big and little and whatever, but when you see it from the positioning of the big map, the eagle view, you just enjoy and do your thing and you know, it's for fun and for joy. I hope it helps and thank you. Absolutely, it helps in, in wherever we are in the on the stage. Uh, some scenes appear benign, like apparently calm and others not, but this lovely neutrality feeling is so um, stable it really uh, shows you the benefit you can play the part uh, and what you said about the small part reminds me of uh, Pishant tells the story of the director who also played a very small part peripheral part in a film but he got an award because even though it was a small part it played it so well <laughs> so it's fun but it's really in the consciousness, isn't it? That you feel the relief that actors are getting connected to their supreme region beyond the commotion. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. And anything you want to add? Sanjay? Yeah, that's uh, very true. Just to stick to the attitude of having fun and um, nothing really matters in the story, just to see the others as actors and 
to appreciate the act, even when they shout at you, even the, when they say uh, things uh, that are not pleasant for the ear. Just remember, this is a script. This is meant to be. It was many, many times before, and you went through them uh, successfully. So keep that in mind. Thank you. Very nice. I noticed the best knowledge is this. It's happened before uh, when you're on a plane with really bad turbulence. That's the one that comes up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, feel free to keep the comments, questions coming. I found them very beneficial today, the interaction. Shall we pass now to Prashant? Anything? Um, we have a couple of questions here. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. And um, thank you to Sanjay. And uh, we create a few more minutes of attention again. And as was emphasized attention necessarily means we are experiencing the rich and immensely beautiful truth. And we are also seeing the whole thing. We are seeing the physical world and we are seeing the world beyond, we are seeing the whole picture, complete map. And in this complete map, we are not childish anymore. We are understanding the story for what it is. Most important, it is not our world. This whole physical world that we see, it is not our world. Just like Spin visiting his friend, that is not his world. He was just going there for a short time. It's a gift, a temporary gift. His world is separate. So also here, the invisible player, he, he understands this physical world is separate. When we use the word story, it also means it is empty. In this physical world, it is like images come, images go. It is empty. In story, you can talk about what you like. You can talk about golden palaces and golden, golden city. But there is no city, it is a story. It's also here. This is the story world. Ravan is deceived by that empty world. That's why Ravan forever feels empty. Bigger the Ravan, there will be more emptiness. And how does it present emptiness? He all the time feels he's lacking something, he's missing something, he's needing something. And that he can lose everything. Just like Spin, he was crying. Why he was crying? Because of that emptiness, missing and losing. That is the life of Ravan. Invisible prince, he knows the world, empty world, but he knows the, his world beyond. And his world beyond is immortal. It exists forever. He silently knows that he is lucky. His chant is different. 
Ravan's chant is one chant and the chant of the invisible player is different. He says, everyone is lucky. He wants to remind others that they are lucky. See, he sees others. That they are immensely lucky. They are immortal and they got a home and great family, world of joy and love. World beyond harm. Every aspect is the best. He is seeing it. Not just full, but he also knows the perfection. Perfection of everyone and perfection of the home and perfection of the father and the self. And it was a perfection of the story. Ravan will not say anything is perfect. The Ravan's focus is on the, on the negative. Whereas the chant of the invisible prince is everything is just right. Starting position is this. Then he needs nothing from anywhere. Certainly he is not going into the story with a begging ball. Never a victim, never a beggar. His life is different to make others lucky. That is his full time life. He silently knows he is loved by God. And everyone is worthy to be loved by God. He sees that and as if creates light. And this light is the important factor in this collective victory. Our real victory is over this lower consciousness. Lower consciousness is what we call Ravan within us. And every second we are experiencing this, we contribute to the collective victory. We contribute to the true benevolence. Whilst uh, the world, you know, when we are in this lower consciousness, they are trying to solve the problem by making Ravan happy, by, by giving Ravan what he wants. He wants a bigger hat, give him the hat. He wants cakes, give him cakes. They want to please Ravan in, in themselves, in others. But what happens in that, uh, under that spell of deception, you are trying to solve it, Ravan gets bigger. And if Ravan is bigger, he feels more empty. Emptiness increases. And the beggar increases and the victim increases. You don't solve it. The demon increases. We have the option of true victory with the method of truth. First come out of the deception. Come into this dimension of truth.
<clears throat> now very happy to hear any comments, questions. Thank you. One question, the subconscious mind plays a big role in whether we win the game or not. How can we use Paris intellect to reprogram the subconscious mind? Sure. You know, anything that goes to the subconscious can only go from the conscious. Nothing will reach subconscious bypassing the conscious. So every second and at a conscious level, you are experiencing the truth and experiencing this new perspective, new angle. You are not working from the beggar or the victim or the demon. You are working from the prince. In full truth, you know, you are seeing it you know, for one minute. It will, you are already do, uh, doing this at the conscious and it will go into the subconscious. But doing it with, um, as we said, it may be for one minute or 10 minutes, but go for 100%. We have that option. And my Maya within us will tell, do it gradually, make it 50%. Now, 50% means 50% confusion. Go for 100% Paris. Maybe for one minute, but see it fully in the way God sees. Another question here. If I keep the exit in mind, then how do I keep my enthusiasm during my life journey? I keep it elevated while keeping that exit in my awareness. Yeah, sure. You know, like uh, the example of spin and mother. You know, mother is aware of the exit. It did not reduce her uh, enthusiasm of the place. She enjoyed it even more because she knew about her home and she knew about a bigger city and uh, and that she is there for a short time. You know, she's not worried subconsciously what will happen after one hour, what will happen after 10 minutes. She knows she's going to leave the place. And so she enjoys the journey also. She enjoys coming in. She enjoys going out. She's not deceived. We don't need deception to enjoy the place. When we are not deceived, we enjoy from that higher consciousness. And Ravan is the one who enjoys from the, in that deception. He needs that blind spot to get get into his party, you know. But um, Ravan's existence itself is subconscious pain. Subconsciously, he is worried, but externally, he is having party. That is true. This is what many. Uh, this, this is the psychology of people, you know. Uh, don't don't face the truth just hide and then they can have a party but uh, sooner or later we have to uh, we just make the deception worse in the process just to clarify how did Ravan make use of the blind spot and party how does that happen? You know, if he doesn't see that there is any any exit, 
then he can eat more cakes and he can get drunk more and he can get more attachments. He thinks you know, there is no, no problem. Uh, he's not doing anything wrong. It is a bit like, you know, someone has got serious illness and he says, don't think of the illness. In a serious illness, it is getting worse, but don't think of it. He thinks he's solving it by not thinking of it. But illness is getting worse. Someone who goes to the doctor on the first day, he gets cured. Illness is not a problem. Every illness has an answer. But one who is hiding it, you know, he, just, he thinks he can solve it, but he's hiding the problem. He thinks he can have a good time by hiding, not thinking of it. Out of sight, out of mind. There is one question. I know we've come to time and then we will also be having a drill uh, from other band. And maybe this is a quick question. What's the BK view on how many years past prior to AD time in the cycle today. So what is, um, what year is it? How many years? How much, how much time is left? Oh, yeah, whichever way you want to answer. <laughs> is it good? You know, it is good for us to have the attitude that today may be the last day. It is, it is in our interest because the exit more clearer the exit is, we will be out of deception. Just like we said, spin, it should be told. There is, we are going to live, we are going to live. We also, Ravan within us doesn't want to hear that there is an exit. Then he can, he can join the party and, and uh, create more bondages. And that it is good for us to be aware that today may be the last day. And it, it, it appears that it is coming to very close. It may be the last day. But you, you will never regret if you work with that time scale. You know, you will find that just that you are out of deception. And when you are out of deception, your your journey is angelic. Instead of Ravan's journey, angel is the one who is using the mind and using the life. It seems Otherwise, like it... Papa doesn't tell us the final date, but at a Baba gives us the method for purification. Baba is not here to tell us the, the time, make us time conscious. He gives us the method how we can be, how we can win this game. Yes, it's that consciousness that we need at the end. So everything is very easy, natural, like you're waiting for a train and the train comes and you leave, you don't get attached to the platform and you keep your eye on the time. Um, just maybe one question's come in. Um, if we think today is the last day, don't we manifest our death? Because this birth is precious and we want to live as long as possible in order to make effort. What is the first thing? The, do we not? Do we not manifest our death by keep thinking, "Oh, it's my last day"? It's like a morbid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what That's really it. happens is you conquer that. You know, as was said, when you when people don't think of that, you know, they end up creating more bondages. Ravan increases. And Ravan is all the time worried about death. You know, uh, because that is the worst thing that can have happen to Ravan is death. But when you look at death, face death, you know, instead of hiding it, 
you realize there is no death. You don't die to anything. Just Ravan becomes, Ravan is removed. And he's more likely to live longer also, but he has conquered death. If there is no, he's not frightened of that, he's not thinking of that. There's a nice saying, you know, in English, <laughs> you know, the, but uh, translation uh, those who die when they are alive, they do not die when they die. <laughs> So I will repeat, those who die when they are alive, they do not die when they die. Other way around, those who do not die, they die every second. All life, they are worried about slightest noise. They say, oh, <laughs> what is going to happen to me? All life, they are worried about that. That is Ravan's psychology. But once you are free from that, you know, subconscious worrying about that, you are more likely to live longer. And also uh, be healthier also. It's really the Ravan is dying and the angel is coming alive. Yes. Thank you. Any final aspect you want to share before the drill, Vishant? No. Well, um, nice opportunity for us for the next uh, 24 hours, these two days. In a, in a victory is such a beautiful you know, subject. Baba comes here to help us gain victory and uh, to take this very necessary steps and uh, we have already heard the story of Ram Sita but these are like necessary steps to to go for a quick victory the necessary steps also the stretching the intellect to make the the tool really sharp so for me it was um experimenting with no beginning no end it's like the grappling and also the invisible this invisible reality of the self the father the home and the family everything so thank you so much to all and all the presence questions so we'll finish with this drill from Dada. thank you Thanks.
Thank you.